So, if I can come to Senator Dale Fowler, uh, this fellow is quite unstoppable, a formidable force. I've had uh, many good times sitting with this man. He's not just from the private sector and in his role as a government leader, but he has this stupendous charitable organization. I've attended many events, we've partnered on different levels as well with events, and his organization has existed for more than 16 years now, servicing thousands of children and families. I, you just can't even keep a track, it's unbelievable. So, Dale, the question comes to you. <clears throat> you're a man of the private sector, you're a man of the public sector. How do we find a common ground, a fusion, between both animals to solve this position shortage issue? Can you give us your wisdom? All right, uh, good question, thank you. First and foremost, too, also I wanna uh, apologize for everyone. Congressman Boston and I are actually dealing with some major uh, emergency issues down in Alexander County with the flooding. And we have uh, some conference calls coming up here shortly with uh, emergency management, both on the federal, state, and local levels. So uh, we apologize for the fact that we're not. Yeah, we might we might say that a moment ago that you said that we, we can decide where roads go, we just can't decide where God puts the water on top. So we're concerned for everyone's safety down there. This is, uh, for those of you who don't know, that this is the longest lasting flood we've had in over 100 years. Uh, uh, levees were saturated, so, so I just wanted to let everyone know that we have to maybe step up and get on the phone with emergency management here in a few minutes. So I just wanted to let that so. Yes. Thank you, thank you, Dale. So, yes. so that, um, and what we have to continue to do is continue to promote the incredible resources we have. You know, we're running into a similar situation with a teacher shortage in the state of Illinois. Uh, not only to recruit good qualified teachers, but also retain the good qualified teachers we currently have uh, here in the state. And we have the same issue in the field of physicians. Also, what we have to do is continue, which I'm excited about, uh, then there's a lot of the major expansions that we have uh, within, within our, some of our local hospitals. Uh, Farrell Hospital, which you and I talked about earlier, you know, doing a, a multi-million dollar expansion, which is going to be able to recruit uh, some additional physicians. We just saw that uh, uh, Harrisburg Medical Center just uh, went through a major expansion, being able to recruit uh, more, more physicians. Uh, we've seen what's going, you know, what's gone on with SIH and, and, and Memorial and uh, Hardin County and Union County, and you know, the list goes on in Hamilton County. So. We have to continue um, uh, to promote and to continue to build upon all the incredible resources we have. And we also have to, just like we are in the education field, do a better job of, in my opinion, of getting into these schools and talk about the opportunity that lies in the field of healthcare, just like the opportunity lies in the field of education. And I, I'm using these comparison because they're, they're similar concerns that we have uh, because if we don't do something about both, we're gonna be in a critical state. And uh, obviously education, uh, you have to have education that has good physicians. And if we don't continue, if we don't try to incentivize and continue to uh, recruit, as I mentioned, uh, then uh, that, that number is going to continue to increase. And I'm really, really concerned about that. But we just have to, you know, we have to promote all the incredible beauty we have here. We have to continue to promote our tourism, our, you know, our incredible schools to be able to bring these physicians in. And I've gotten to know so many of you. And I appreciate that to, to let you to let everyone know that these positions are welcome, and and uh, uh, we we want to make sure that they have a good life in Southern Illinois, they raise a family in Southern Illinois, and uh, be a part of Southern Illinois, be a part of the community. As you mentioned, on my foundation the garage, um, you know, over seven, about 17 years ago, I woke up in the middle of the night and uh, decided I wanted to make a difference in the lives of underprivileged, underprivileged children. And I really only had a vision of helping a few kids a year, actually, with being able to supply a complete brand new wardrobe for children that otherwise would not have the uh, opportunity to wear a new wardrobe. And here we are, fast forward 17 years later, we're helping over 600 children a year in over 19 counties. And then upon that, we have our, uh, you know, the hunger issue that we have. And I know I'm wavering just a little bit, but I wanted to uh, capitalize on this opportunity, Roswell. Well, I had the microphone to be able to talk about uh, feeding the hungry. Last September, through my foundation as well, we opened Heaven's Kitchen in, in Harrisburg. And on Tuesday nights, we're feeding over 200 hungry citizens. Uh, and we are already, just like Clothes for Kids, 17 years ago started in one school building, is now in, in 19 counties. 
uh, Heather's Kitchen and, and our feeding program and our meal program is getting ready to expand throughout Southern Illinois as well. So as leaders uh, in this room, everyone, everyone in this room can be a vital part. You don't necessarily have to form your own foundation, but you can be a vital part in supporting these incredible uh, organizations that we have that are trying to make a, make a difference in the lives of the ones that can't afford health care, the ones that can't afford new clothing, the ones, the ones that can't uh, put food in their, in their children's mouths. Very poignant. Thank you, Senator Fowler. I know you're very passionate about 